Welcome at the next installment of our um, Painting Buddha Academy videos. We will learn about uh, how to paint fur on this miniature here that you see. Um, it's uh, He's called Anshut, the cursed warlock of the Gabrax, <laughs> uh, a beastman miniature from Mir's miniatures. It's a nice miniature. We changed uh, some things about it. Uh, for example, we uh, swapped the weapon because we thought it's uh, it's a more uh, primordial, more um, basic weapon that fits the beastman's uh, wild nature better than the sword that he had. And as you can see, we painted some parts that uh, like this little crap uh, <laughs> armor that he has around his groin. You also changed the position of the head. Yeah, exactly. The, the head usually was more... Um, Looking downwards or something. You know, the neck uh, is an important part at this miniature, I think. I wanted him to kind of um, guide um, the troops or his fellow beastmen uh, into into battle. So um, actually the orientation of the of the banner is uh, is also uh, variable. You can change it. So yes, I wanted him to, to walk into, uh, into battle. So if you take a look at the miniature, you will find that it has uh, different types of, of fur, actually. Um, it uh, wears this cape uh, made of a rhino. What about his chest and arms and belly area? Yeah, um, usually, usually you see that people paint that um, as skin very often. We will add some, some little light color, uh, some little skin color to that, uh, but we will not treat these par uh, parts here as, um, as skin because that would be a, sh a shaved goat and uh, you don't <laughs> yeah, want to shave your goat. Trust me, <laughs> it doesn't look good. When you look at references of different animals, you will find that uh, also the, the fur on animals is... Uh, it comes in different um, different tones, actually. You know, it has to do something also with the density of the fur, but also on um, I think how long the fur um, was exposed to the sun, for example. It's uh, different parts. The spotted effect is is typical to some to some animals more than than to others, but all of them have a variation in the in the fur tone, and this is something that we will have to keep in in mind. Okay, so let's start with the with the woolly rhino here on the back. Um, for this, you can see on the palette, I've prepared some some colors. Um, as always, our uh, highlight colors here. Um, this reddish tone, these reddish tones here, will be uh, the tones I will use for the for the skin of the of the beastman itself. And uh, for the rhino, I will go into a more grayish uh, uh, fur tone in order to um, to see the difference of his own fur and the fur that he has uh, harvested somewhere. Uh, the, the darker tone is a Sheridan granite uh, from the foundation uh, range of uh, Games Workshop, uh, all together with a Deneb stone, um, which is a bit lighter color, like a sand color. And uh, here I have some, some, some black also, so it all merges together. Um, I will take all of these and make a, make a grayish lighter tone. It's still a natural tone, but it's not not a I don't know living tone. It's not very alive. Mm. When you look at the uh, fur of uh, dead animals, I think it changes its tonality too. You know, it loses the shine maybe. Um, also, since this is on his shoulders, I think it might uh, get bleached out over the time yeah, by rain and sun and whatever. Mm. So, yeah. The important part also here, um, where we put on the first layer of uh, of the foundation, is that I al already tried to um, to put a bit lighter tone up here than I put down here. Oh, yeah. um, it's a bit like a wet and wet uh, blending. You put the tone here, and then you can start to um, to mix in slightly different tones into that from from below here, and this is exactly what uh, the fur. Um, what helps uh, to, you know, to bring this fur alive, that there is a change in tonality, in uh, in the different uh, 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 like areas of the of the fur. What about the paint consistency? Mm, that's a base um, base to tone consistency. It's pretty thick. It's not so um, so thin because we we want um, we want a nice solid and homogeneous um, layer. 
you know when you paint fur you will have to um to let it dry quite often uh, similar to hair to human hair when you uh, blow dry them um, the color really collects in all the recesses as you can see here and um, yeah this results in long waiting times until it's uh, completely dry until we can uh, start to work on okay so i will allow this to dry and uh, we'll be back for the next layer of of color the next step will be to lighten up the uh, the fur at some places um, and you could theoretically do that with uh, with a dry brushing i will not do that for the fur for sure because dry brushing always makes this look um, dusty and just not so controlled we will we will paint this uh, this fur in a more uh, traditional way for this i mixed some more of the stone like denim stone uh, color into the the base mix that i have here so look like this and now um i will try to work out certain areas of the of the uh, of the rhino um with with more light Consistency of the paint at this point is uh, it's still, the same again. Yeah, it's still pretty thick. Yes. Okay. This uh, step is really to uh, to to bring a lot more light into certain um, sections of the of the fur. Okay. And remember that the 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 different tones are very important. That you know you don't have only one uh, one tone going over everything, but there are something like these these spotted sections uh, throughout the the fur so actually um we take the light into account at this point but it's more like marking down um different strains of hair that will then uh, have this uh, these colors and it's very true for for fur and for hair that uh, the the a realistic effect is uh, is created by applying many many different um, tones so it's a lot of work with a lo lot of different tones that make the, the effect look good also here I, I think I want the face to be the the lightest spot uh, in this in the section It's like a sketch really it's very variable you know the step you can really not do much wrong it's it's as i said like a sketch um, you can try out certain things and only if you're happy you go into the next step and decide if if you want to to go further so to say and yeah remember this part here is exposed to the sun so it will be bleached out and this also here Will be very bright and then dropping down something interesting has to happen so that's why there's red in it you could also add some some blue to it if you want to make it more cold or work entirely with blues if your um, beastman is set into um, into winter for example setup or base then you could also add some blues to it also if it's uh, night light like moonshine yeah You know, the miniature itself, it's, it has uh, quite a strong maritime impact to it. If you look closely, this is yeah, here, yeah. it looks like the... Shark jaw. Yeah, like shark jaw, then he has the crab here. So, um, the color you're using right now is uh, still that mix you had before, it's not a lighter color. Well, um, I have this, if you look at the palette cam here, I have this lighter color here and it kind of floats into that um, base color. And I sometimes take more of it into it. Ah, okay. So actually it is, um, it is gradually getting lighter, you know, as we go. But it's, it's um, there in order to, 
really to um, add more more and more light and more um, more brightness into the, the, the mix and more variance. Yeah, so you see you can also add some a bit more of the brown of the reddish brown tone uh, here. And uh, slowly and slowly you incorporate more and more of these uh, tones while uh, while still you know seeing that this is the lightest spot here. This will be the lightest spot up here. I think I will dry this uh, and then we will continue with the next step. Now we will put uh, put in more highlight into that using the the fur base tone and adding a little bit of ivory uh, to the tip. You've seen it quite often already <laughs> in our videos, the loaded brush technique that Ben uses quite a lot. And with this technique, we will um, add even more light to, to certain strains of the hair here, around this, this area here. So this is a more controlled step than before because you are only painting on certain strains. Yes. Because yeah, the upper part needs more light, really. And also, uh, you can try to think about where the light comes from. The fur is shaped like a, like a leaf, maybe you could say. And also leaves, uh, they would catch the light on this side and not so much on this. So. Still, this is not the shine of the fur, but um, like a lighter kind of fur. Try to set, to differentiate between the global light and the detail light. So this would be like more like a global light. Get the overall situation, and if this is set and you know the sketch is good, then you go in and uh, start to to um, to become more and more precise and more small. So I will continue on on this side here also on the, the part that is difficult to reach and it's almost impossible for the camera to see. Yeah, and then we will come back. The next step will be to use the uh, dark brown model wash uh, from Vallejo to um, to bring some also some little bit gloss or like satin uh, shine to certain areas and also to bring together the um, some of the colors. Is this uh, diluted paint or is it uh, right out of the pot? No, no, this is uh, diluted. Um, quite so. Uh, we will apply it. Ah, okay, now, yeah. now I can see. Yeah, yeah, like this. All right, and we we put it not every on everything, but mostly from from the bottom, and uh, work it up slightly um, here into the the lighter areas. You took some water there. Yes, this okay. was one. So I again, I, I put it here, for example. Then I clean the brush and I pull it into the the lighter parts just a bit. And for the topmost part here, I just use um, you can see it's very very faint. I use something like this and uh, put it up here so it gives the, this impact of the tone that I want, but not. Uh, changing the color too much. Uh, fur like this collects a lot of humidity um, and the hair has a, a little you know shine to it so this is what uh, this step should do. It uh, just incorporates just a little bit of the tone and gives this satin, uh, satin finish to it. As always, in what we uh, I I try to teach, is not to know a fixed uh, recipe because colors can change, they can disappear, and you have to adapt to situations. It's way better to know um what you what the result that you want to have to look uh, is you know the effect. So you can really go and look for different colors and uh, yeah, 
experiment a lot also on the effect rather than trying to um, execute instructions. It's really no use. Yeah, it makes sense. We will come back when this layer is, is dry. It will look very different than now. You will see it in a second. As always, when uh, working with resin miniatures and uh, blow dryer, keep in mind that it gets oh, yeah. hot. And we had this in the, in the previous edition with the Horus miniature that uh, certain parts started to bend. And also this, <laughs> you see, it's, it's very, uh, very soft now. So be careful. Um, ideally, you have a blow dryer that also uh, can, can blow cold air because you only need this to, to condense uh, the, the, the water from the color and not really to warm it up. Okay, so as you see, we changed the brush because now um, we leave the global light because it's, I think it's quite good. You know, the, sketch, the sketch helps me to know where, uh, where I put the, now the local light. And for this, we, we changed the, the brush to a bit smaller brush. And the goal of the local light is to, um, to enhance the contrast and to build a little detail that is not there in the scalp necessarily. Again, um, having the, the base tone and the brush and adding a little bit of the ivory tone to the tip. And then we paint um, little light edges on where the light would, would hit the, the fur. Also, if some of these strains are too white, like this one here, you can go in with the base tone again and then just cover it up so it's not uh, not so super prominent at this place anymore. Okay, so you see in this upper part uh, where we were aiming at, uh, the light is building up really nicely with these little uh, little hair strains here. Also, I will um, add, I think, a bit more highlights on the head. No? Yeah, some highlights here. Uh, also, maybe a little bit of a reddish tone here. I really think it will help if this the head pops out more, like here. And then, um, yeah, this will be the focal point of the back. As you can see, we added a little bit of red here around the snout. We did this by simply uh, taking some Mephisto red and mixing it with uh, some tank brown. And then we applied that in a, in a very glaze-like, very light uh, color here. I think that's good because it brings all, all the nice little detail that's on the rhino head there. Mm -hmm. I also think so that it's it looks a bit uh, bloody in a way. Yeah. So it looks pretty brutal. Uh, also here, you know that maybe it has been slain not so super long ago, and uh, the the blood has dried down there. Yeah. Also, it helps to to really to also here to bring out some of the details as you just said. So in general, I think that a little bit more um, uh, of the tank brown. Could help us to to bring more contrast into the the hair so we again we take it pretty diluted and um, apply it from from the shadowy side 
of these individual uh, strains here. So you go in between the strains with the disease. But... Yes. Okay. And uh, therefore, yeah, work on the contrast, uh, help to set them off one another a bit, you know, to, to make them more easily uh, differentiated. So after this step um, of applying a bit of the tank brown to give it a, a bit more red, reddish impact, we can also take some of the brown ink that I have in this little cup here on the palette. And the brown ink is a very dark color that will also le uh, leave a very dark gloss to it. And if I now have some, some spots that I think uh, would look better, darker, like this here, I would just apply a tiny little bit of it here clean the brush and then um, help it to find its way. Because this really high gloss also helps to bring more um, interesting texture and uh, you see gloss into the into these parts and therefore make it look more alive or more interesting. Yeah, also it might get dirtier and wetter, like down there. Mm -hmm. But really use it carefully and don't go crazy with it. Just some spots like here, there, there, and maybe it's some little bits here. Maybe also in the eye, very carefully. Um, and here in the nostrils. I might uh, later go in uh, with um, with something like a like a light color like this, and add some little dabs here and there, uh, but I will have to see that afterwards. These are decisions that I will leave for later. For now, it's good, yeah, and I think we together, you mean? Hmm? to make it all fit together in the end. Yes, yeah. to harmonize it in a smaller scale. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the next uh, thing I think we will paint is the, the fur and his, uh, his chest and all this. So this is uh, the result after putting on some additional highlights, especially in these darker areas also. You know, they are much, more, uh, much smaller uh, than the ones here. But this is exactly what we have to do, that in the dark areas, the, the highlight will just set on the very edge of the, of the hair. And up here, it's more, um, it's a bigger, it's a big area that is uh, highlighted. Also, the little highlights on on the rhino here really help to to show that this is a different uh, texture than uh, than the fur. Is the horn finished like that? I don't know. I, I think I just blacked it out and then added just a little highlight on on top here, a little uh, gray. Uh, it's not finished yet. Uh, I will correct this later when I go and work on the horns. But I wanted to see how it looks, uh, you know, when it's a bit cancelled out and not so prominent. This leads us to the next step, and this will be the um, his own fur or skin fur, whatever you might uh, want to call it. And for this, we we want to have a bit more warm, a uh, bit more brown, uh, brownish tone. I have uh, a variety of of warm browns here on the palette. Um, this is here some Kaltan brown, some vermin brown, then um, some terracotta. Um, and this here is a P3 color called, uh, I think it's Iridian Flesh or Iridian Flesh. Um, as I explained before, you, it's important to have different uh, zones of, of brown tones when you, when you paint fur. Especially true for the, for the face also. Yeah, so you see the mixture of these tones all together with a little bit black and uh, tank brown will result in a, in a base tone. It's um, again like a base color, it's pretty thick. For the chest, at this point, we can add a little bit of flesh tone. Not much, because as we said, it's not a naked goat. Um, but still some there might be some some lighter tone up here so we just uh, add it at this stage and I will continue to put this uh, first base uh, tone on everything 
and then we will return when this is uh, dry. Similar to what we did with the with the other fur, um, you know, with the global thing first, uh, and then to get all the little details in. Here we do um, do something similar. So we try to build up the the volumes uh, first in general, you know, the, the, the global volume, and then we will get in and um, paint the little details in there. How thick should be the color? Uh, the step. It's uh, also pretty thick. You see it here, covers. I think it's something like a layer layer color. Here the fur doesn't uh, form these little strains, but it's more uh, it's more fine. So we see these as surfaces first, you know, like a one smooth surface without uh, really going into along the the hair. We just need some some lighter color here and there. Also here in the face. It's also good to have a quite a big portion of uh, of base color prepared, as you can see here on the palette. I have this paddle here, and um, this always stays, so I can always have it and use it for different things, like lighting them, uh, lighting it up, or toning it down. So yes, we continue putting some some lighter uh, color on these um, spots where the light would naturally hit it without really paying too much attention to the to the detail what we want to do more again is like a sketch uh, for the light to know where we will then continue with the details um, what, what you called the global light before yes here i add some some flesh tone to this to this mix as we will have to lighten up the, those apps and the, the area around the, the belly, the stomach and the chest. And also at this point we can again add some of the bit darker color and use the still wet uh, surfaces to, to blend it in just a little bit in between. So it's not so the contrast is not so super strong, and the sketch uh, will be a bit more um, a bit more blended actually, and not so 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 brutal on the eye. So we can slowly build up a smooth blending here. Also, in the end, the head should be the lightest part, as it um, should really catch the the tension. Uh, the eye first, so I want this here to be the, the lightest part in the end, so it needs more light. So I just add a bit, little bit more cream to the um, to the base color, and again start to apply it where um, the light would naturally set. Here a bit on the like here on the cheek on this fur here on the cheek and also above on the. Um, I guess it's the forehead. Forehead. <laughs> Now I have added a little bit more tank brown to the palette. Okay. And uh, here I still have some, some black. And I will use this to, to set some uh, first shadows onto the, onto the skin and the fur. So we go pretty diluted and start to, to put it here, for example, where the belly is in these um, underneath these apps uh, app muscles here and darken it down gradually like this
name to allow it to be applied next uh, next few uh, glazes like that. Same with the with the newly highlighted leg here. Just um, put it beside, and then clean the brush and just work it into the surface so it blends a bit better with the um, existing with this part here down down here. For the face, um, it, needs no, it needs some shadow um, here under the eye brows and um, here around the mouth and here underneath the chin. I think the other parts are pretty difficult to, to reach. You mean the, the right side? Yeah, of the face? here, so I will do this um, off, will, cam. off cam. And then we'll be back for the next step. And also we switch the brush to a bit smaller one. As we now again uh, go into the bit more local uh, detailing of, of the elements. So for example here on this leg. Will you be painting single strains? Or? Yeah. Um, you see, you hold your brush uh, not like this, but you hold it sideways, and then you um, try to hit some of the peaks of these uh, of these strains here. And here also you, you, the way you hold the brush and you paint is uh, a bit different to what we did before. It's like using more the side of the brush to, yeah, to hit these big hair thingies, like the edges up here. Also you can try to hit some of these um, edges here in the darker areas to make them um, shine out and once you see that something was too much you can still correct it with the base tone that you have used for uh, <clears throat> for this part before you can kind of give it a little that's a good tip a little wash same goes for the for the upper leg here it was a bit too bright too bright so now a little wash with the base tone will uh, bring it back down. Okay, for the uh, for the chest, it's a little bit different. Mm, we do nearly the same. Like we we mix the base tone with a little bit of the skin color, and then we add some some white, and then we um, we start to set the highlight on on these apps, but in little uh, strokes. So then it resembles fur or yes. what's the, okay. Uh, it resembles a little furry uh, texture there. Actually, there was a bit too light here, so the effect was too dramatic. So we, we start slowly. What do you mean it was too dramatic? The, the surface was too big? For, no. The, for, for the very light color? Or? No, the um, the difference between the tone that was already on there and the one that I applied was too big, so I um, that light should only be for the very last highlights. Or? Yeah, it should it should not be so strong. The the difference. Okay. So this is better here. So that's the difference uh, between the, the f uh, highlighting the fur and this chest piece that we now um, paint on these, this little fur texture on the, on the chest, which is very flat. The sculpt has no fur in it. And 
also when we went too far we can still correct it with the base tone with a little bit skin color here The color you're using for, for the corrections is uh, very diluted, isn't it? Yes, yes. It's, uh, okay. Also here I took some, some of the tank brown again, uh, the shadow color, the light shadow color. Okay. And then I can again like correct the um, here, the for example, these. The deeper shadows yes, and yes. stuff like that. Okay. And correct them. You can really sculpt some, so, to some extent with uh, paint and sculpt also things that are not there. Okay, enough for now. Now we will go up to the head, base tone and the cream color with white in it. Will you be repeating the same steps you did on the chest, on, on his forehead and arms? Yes, yes. But for the face, um, you see, like this is the fur here. So it needs to, need to do it similar to what we did on the legs. And then a bit more controlled uh, highlights on top of the head with the logo brush technique. And try to build the highlight up, up there. A more classic way. Hope you can see it on the on the camera and that the standard is not. Yeah, it's, it's in a way. It, it's hiding his head a little bit. So yeah, it's uh, it's really not easy to film because of the the banner is always in the way. But I will continue to do this. Uh, what I did here on the arms, and I have to b get a bit closer for the face because it's really small. And uh, yeah, I think we will be back when this is done. So we took some time, readjusted the camera, and now you can actually see a lot more of the detail that is uh, painted on. We um, used the time to already paint uh, the chest a bit further with the fur effect that you see here. And we will show you how to achieve this effect on uh, on the arm actually here. For this we, we mix the base tone with, uh, you can see it here, with a little bit of um, sand color and white so we get a pretty uh, light tone and it has to be in a layer consistency and now comes something that's uh, that's important for this kind of uh, for this kind of effect um, we want to to paint on like little hairs hair pieces uh, on a surface that's flat in this case of this uh, chest muscle, for example, it was um, logical that the, the hair would start here and kind of fall down in this direction. Here we choose this direction too because of the, um, you know, of the dynamic of the whole figure and we thought that maybe there might be some wind coming and blowing his chest hairs. And also it's not only one color that we add here now, but it's like three or four different colors. Uh, when you look closely, there is uh, there's also some some darker lines in between these uh, light lines. For the arm, I think we we paint the, uh, the fur going across the arm like this. And start to add little lines like that. You should not go crazy with the fur all over, but um, yeah, maybe look at your own arms <laughs> or you find a very hairy friend and look at his, <laughs> but then you will find that, uh, yeah, the where to put the, the fur. So maybe like this. So this was the first color, right? Second one will be a bit more grayish.
the first color that we put on, it was good to streak it out a bit, but now uh, the lighter we go, the shorter these uh, little hairs uh, should be. It doesn't look natural if it's uh, just running all over the um, arm, the arm. It's not so good. Better to have like little um, dabs. Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be short fur and not long hairs. And now you see they are quite bright. So we will mix a shadow color of some darker hair with the charadon that's uh, sh similar to the, the, uh, the color that we used here. So it's it's more harmonic. The, the, the colors of the figure together mm. nicely. And the very last uh, kind of hair or um, yeah, well, reflect uh, highlight should be uh, pretty light color, nearly white. And in this, I try to hit the um, hit some points that have been created by the the hair uh, that has been set before there. Like, okay, so as if it was like the the highest point in that little bush of hair. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I think I will go uh, go on. Also here on the legs, I will put more uh, more highlight on. Uh, now that I see how bright this is, this yeah, needs more. There's diff definitely a difference in, in brightness on his legs. This is where we are now. Um, here on the arm, um, I went a bit too too far with the with the white. So I think I will. Mix a little charadon with uh, some tank brown into a, like this mud color that is not really gray and not really brown. And um, you know, in this case, you can drag it in and uh, easily tone away the the white again. The next step would be to tackle the the, the face to go into the face a bit more. Um, I already blacked uh, blacked out these uh, the horns. It's just a, a black like a dark color in order to uh, lose the white because the white is very distracting. And as yeah. soon as you put some any color on it, uh, yeah, you can you get a better feeling for how the whole face will look. The teeth got a, a little green color. That's a commando khaki and uh, a wash with Devlin Mats or nothing. Uh, He's got, a, he's got a little bone inside his nose. Yeah. You know, like a septum piercing or something. There will be a bigger part on bone in general, but I will show you what I mean uh, by uh, ex uh, mixing a little bit uh, cream color and just very briefly um, putting a bit more light on these, on these parts here, on the teeth. Was that some bone color, ivory or... Yeah, that's um, that's the Kuwano Kaki with just a little bit ivory in it, okay. just to you know, to, so you can see how how the elements that you could not properly see before then yeah, start to really start, pop out. Yeah, start to change the, the how the face is perceived. You can see it like that. So now we go f um, we go for the eyes. Mm, I have seen a lot of goat eyes recently. <laughs> Um, and um, uh, it's really they have very peculiar eyes. You know the iris is. Um, I think they're really cr the creepiest animal eyes. In, in yeah, nature. that's true. So it's uh, they're yellow actually, and then they have the black, uh, really tiny black iris. Okay, I wish you luck now. And yeah, thanks. Pressing all the thumbs again. But you can already see how you know one little spot makes really already a, you know difference, and you can more easily see this as a as a face in a way. Especially since the eye sockets were really dark and the, the yellow pops out. Throughout. Now a little bit black for the iris, and well, if that if that was a bust or you know bigger miniature, you could actually do the shape more properly. But here that will be <laughs> super difficult. So people think you know they need a really small brush for this. Uh, doesn't hurt, but the tip is more important actually. Now let's see if I can make this um, this. Try to add some yellow back. Okay. 
if you thought that's it, think again. You still need a little reflex, reflex in there with white, which is always the, the biggest fun. And you want to place this in uh, the black portion of the iris. And suddenly you have a, you know, you have a face, you have a goat that has eyes. <laughs> I think we will do the other one off camera because it's yeah, like really, it's, uh, it's, it's ridiculous it's to, like, to try it like this. Like yeah, it would go like yeah, this yeah, and yeah. then, and then we'll be back in a second. So after finishing the eyes, we are nearly uh, done with uh, the fur and the general skin part. Um, The only thing that I would like to paint now is the little... The little spot between the like on the forehead of the lighter fur and it's the bigger brush again because we want to mark down the the area actually where um where the light spot goes so yeah no no big secret to how to do it Again, this is not light. This is uh, this is another color in the fur itself. Yes. So. And now we switch uh, onto the smaller brush because now we already enter the finer detail. This stage. can only mean one thing: you're going to paint some more fur. Exactly, some more lines. Okay, now this looks a bit rough, so we um, we add some a bit darker lines to split these bigger lines up again. And also some some hair should should move a bit downward. It looks more like fur when it uh, kind of follows the, the same direction and patterns as uh, the rest of the fur. Okay, so yeah, for now that's it. Bones, horns and hooves uh, are the next uh, is the, in the next part. So thanks for watching this part. Hope you can um, you can use some some of the things you have seen here and uh, paint your own uh, fur accordingly. <laughs> Okay, so thanks also to Mati for his uh, expertise once again and uh, see you in the next part.